Hello and welcome back to the final video of this series. In the previous videos, we talked about everything in sections, but in this video we're going to be talking about the interactions between the music, the sound design, and everything in the Unity level as a whole. Right now, I want to talk about the location of the FMOD listener. You can either put the listener on the main camera, or on the player. The problem with putting the FMOD listener on the main camera is the perspective of the camera. This main camera game object is not directly above and looking down at the player. Because it's behind and to the top at an angle from the player, as you can see over here, this is going to cause difficulties with the 3D attenuation settings on our sound sources. If an enemy is directly below the camera over here, we will most likely hear that enemy louder than any enemy that is next to or close to the player. And this is simply because of the distance. The distance from here to the camera is greater than the distance directly below the camera to the camera. So what is our other option then? We could try the player. What if we attach the FMOD listener to the player instead of the camera? Let's try that and let's see what happens. Because the studio listener is now attached to the player, the studio listener is rotating with the player. This means that as the player rotates, the studio listener rotates, but also the location of where you hear the enemies from rotates as well. So this creates a disconnect between what's happening in the main camera view of the game and what's happening in your speakers, headphones, or whatever you're using to listen to the game. If this game was a first person shooter, then placing the studio listener on the player game object would have been an excellent choice. But for now, we're gonna have to try something else. So let's think about this. We want to listen for the sound sources, so the enemies in this case, from the location of where the player might be, but we don't want any rotation that comes with the player object, so we want the rotation to be fixed like the camera view is. So this is our solution. All I've done is I've created a separate game object called Audio Listener. I've then placed that game object into position of where the player's ears might be, so this is where the studio listener is going to be, and then I've just attached the audio listener as a child of the main camera. This way, the audio listener is always pointing straight this way, with the left ear being over here and the right ear being over here, exactly where the player's head would be, or in this case, our camera perspective. This means that now we have the best of both worlds for this listener. We have the perspective of the main camera, while also keeping the attenuation distance of the enemies to the player. So listen for the things we talked about. We've already talked about cooldown in a previous video, but with the concepts I introduced with cooldown, keep those in mind, but now we're going to be talking about voice limits and instance stealing. Let's use the player gun sound as an example. Now look down here in the dock and to the right and you'll notice over here we have a section that says max instances. Over here in this yellow bar we can control the number of max instances. We can go from one all the way up to infinity. So think of it this way. Think of this whole gunshot event as one single audio file from here to here. So whenever a player shoots a bullet from their gun, this event is called, and this whole audio file plays. So if we haven't set a limit on the max number of instances, a few things are going to happen. It could affect your mix. If you just have an incredible number of gunshot sounds and enemy footstep sounds playing, that could reduce your ability or the player's ability to hear other sounds in the level that are more important. And let's say for example then, you haven't set the max instances, so there's 20 audio files playing just for the gunshot sound. If you are running this level on a powerful computer, you might not even notice a difference. In this level, there is only 14 events, but what if there were more? What if there were 100, 500, or even 1000? And what if a number of those events didn't have max instances? They would be playing so many audio files, and so frequently, that you would likely notice a performance drop. Listen for what that does to the overall mix of the game, and particularly listen for the gunshots and the enemy footstep sounds. And also while the scene is playing, have a look at the number of channels that are playing using the FMOD Studio debug over here.
As you can see from the gameplay, there are a lot of channels that are playing, and as you can hear within the mix, all the enemy footstep sounds just take up so much of the space in your mix. But besides just listening to your gameplay and also looking at the FMOD Studio debug, you can use the FMOD Profiler. The F1 Profiler allows you to record and capture your game. To record your gameplay, all you need to do is right click to create a new session, give it a name if you want, and then go into your Unity scene, play it, go back to FMOD, make sure you're connected to the game. And now while that's playing, record, and just play the scene now. When you stop playing your scene, the profiler also stops recording, and then you're left with something that looks like this. So as you can see, the profiler is actually recording a lot of useful information. It's recording the CPU usage for all your events. It's also recording the total CPU usage, and it's showing this in a visual graph on the timeline of the gameplay. It's also showing you the memory usage and the number of instances and voices at a given time. And if you look up here, you also have additional displays for the CPU, memory, audio levels, and more. This is also particularly useful to see how much CPU your DSP or your digital signal processing or your audio effects are using up. And over here, we have the 3D view. This tracks the 3D position of sources in relation to the audio listener. So you can see these are the locations in relation to the listener of the sound sources. Additionally, you can play back your profiler session just by pressing play. You can see the sound sources show up, and you can track all of these usages. As you can see, this can be a very useful tool for identifying and tracking issues and usage within your game. Another thing that you can do in the profiler is you can check the current event that is playing, and you can also see how its parameters are behaving. So in this case, I can look at the music event, I can select it. And then here it shows me all available parameters. And if I play the session now, it shows me exactly when they are being set. This is useful if you're having problems with your parameters, you're not hearing any changes, you can go into the profiler and see if the parameters are indeed being set. And then from there, you can determine what the best course of action is. Right now, let's go to the player gunshot on this graph. You can right click on this event and bring up a number of options. You can do this to remove tracked events from the scope of this profiler session. So let's say player footsteps doesn't really matter for now, I'm gonna remove this. And I wanna see on a data graph the number of instances of the gunshot event. And then I also want the total number of voices that are playing. So from this graph, you can see that when the player is steadily firing their weapon, so over here, there's about 15 to 17 instances of the gunshot during that time. And over here in the voices, you can see that there is between seven and 13 being played at a time. So in this case, those numbers and the CPU usage are too high for us. Let's set the maximum number of instances to lower those numbers and hopefully increase performance. So in our gunshot event, let's set the maximum number of instances to five. You can do that by either clicking, holding, and dragging, or you can just double click and type in how many instances you want. Let's also set the instance stealing to steal from the quietest instance. What this means is if there are five instances of the gunshot sound currently playing in our game, if the game wants to call another instance of the player gunshot sound, in this case that would be the sixth, since we have instance stealing set the quietest, FMOD is going to look at out of all the five instances of the gunshot sound currently playing, which one is the quietest, so it's then going to drop that quietest instance so we can play a new instance of the gunshot sound and be within our max number of instances. So with all of those points in mind, I've gone and I've added some max instances for several events. Now let's take a look at the scene again, but this time with max instances turned on. And I'm also going to capture another profiler session so we can compare the before and after on the player gunshots.
And now if I look at the recording for the latest profiling session, you can see that overall there are less instances of the gunshot and there's also less voices being used. This means that by using max instances to limit the number of instances that can be playing at one time, we are saving system resources and ultimately improving the performance of our game. In this video, we've talked about the FMOD listener position and how you should experiment and find the best possible position for your listener within each project. We've also talked about event instances, max instances, and voice stealing. And finally, we've talked about the FMOD profiler and how it can be a very beneficial tool in finding out exactly what is going on in your audio system. That concludes this five part video series. I hope you've learned something new and that you use the information that was discussed in these videos in your future projects. I'm Daniel Sikora. Thanks for watching.